Today we're taking a look at English grammar's exceptions and oddities in these coordinate structures that we've been looking at. So the first of three exceptions I want to look at is the polysidin. So you can actually omit all the commas in a series and actually use the word and in between every single item. And this creates what we call a polysidin. So if I said Iona and Maggie and Gina and Ruth wore pickle dresses and danced and laughed and sang at Henry's New Year's party, those would be two examples of a polysidin. So a polysidin is when we have a list. And what I've done is instead of putting commas between each of the items, I put the word and. And that's where we get the word poly from, meaning many. So you have many ands. A and B and C and D and E and etc. So there are no commas just many ands, and that's what we call a polysidin. So the question is, why would we want to use a polysidin? It's a great question, picklehead. All right, so a polysidin makes the list seem much longer and much more extensive than it really is. It also gives a bouncy lilt to your voice. It has a little bit of an energy that's not necessarily present in a traditional list. Oh, look at that, isn't that glamorous? All right, so some examples for us. Once again, Iona and Maggie and Gina and Ruth, that would be a polysidentin. Or if I string out my verbs, wore pickle dresses and danced and laughed and sang, another example of a polysidentin. If I said Henry was the perfect host, he was lively and funny and boisterous and generous, a polysidentin. We hooted and hollered and rang in the new year. So it takes the list, which would be traditional of hooted, hollered, and rang in, and just stretches it out a little bit, gives a little bit of a bounce to it. And that's what we call the polysidentin. Exception number two, you can actually do the opposite. You can omit the serial and in a series, which is that last and, and simply put a comma there and call that an accident. So I could say the pickle girl's dresses were novel, chic, head turning. Well, I didn't say novel, chic, and head turning. I just simply said novel, chic, head turning. And I didn't include that final and in that series. So really what you're doing is you're making a listing, but you never put the serial and at the very end. A, comma, B, comma, C, comma, D, comma, E, comma, et cetera. So basically that's all commas, but no ands. So the prefix of A makes something not. So something that's symmetrical and then asymmetrical. It's not symmetrical. So this is why we call it an asedentin. It's not. It doesn't have the and. So the question is, why would we want to use an asedentin? It's a good question. Picklehead. So an acident is actually one of my favorites to use. It makes the list seem endless, whereas a, a regular series sounds very finite, like it has an end to it, where an acident kind of connotes or gives us the connotation that it actually continues. So therefore, it's almost like there's more I could have said. I just simply stopped, but there, the list would continue on. Very glamorous transition, isn't it? So if I said the pickle girl's dresses were novel, chic, head turning. Well, there's more adjectives I could have used. I just simply stopped there. I could say Henry was the perfect host. He was lively, funny, boisterous, generous, etc. is sort of what you're saying. We blew noisemakers, banged pots and pans, rang cowboy, cowbells, cowbells, shot fireworks for the new year. Once again, a listing of things you're doing. I'm sure you did other things other than that, but the incident gives the impression that the list continues on. The last exception we have is that we have to be careful what we call an elliptical structure by eliminating the determiners and the modifiers in a coordinate pair. Gosh, that sounds fancy. All right. So here's what I mean. If I said my sister and mom are watching The Bachelor, and if we were diagramming this, we recognize that the word my is sort of being shared by both. We're kind of saying my sister and my mom. And we call that elliptical. Elliptical comes from the word ellipses. And so it's a way of letting us know that something's understood. So really what you're saying is my sister and my mom were watching The Bachelor. On a diagram, we'd probably put the word my underneath the nub as a way of letting us know that you're actually referring to both sister and mom. And so it's kind of being shared. If I said my pregnant sister and mom are watching The Bachelor, well, now it's a little tricky. We have to be careful when we use modifiers. So it's hard to figure out. The word my kind of goes with both. It's my sister and my mom. 
but it's hard to figure out whether it's my pregnant sister and my pregnant mom, or is it just my pregnant sister and my mom? So sometimes reordering it is the best way to kind of provide some clarity. So I could say my mom and pregnant sister. That way the word my is being shared with both, but the modifier pregnant only goes with sister. Or I could just simply choose my elliptical modifiers very carefully and say something like my pregnant sister and my mom are watching The Bachelor. And once again, being careful of making sure that pregnant only goes with sister, but not with mom. So we got to be careful when we assume the reader knows where these modifiers and determiners go. And sometimes it's better just to simply come out and say it. The real problem occurs with numbers. So be careful of numbers. If I said there were six stray dogs and cats left at my front door this morning, that's great, except I can't tell whether I'm getting six dogs and cats total or am I getting six dogs and six cats. So are there six or are there 12? You can't tell. You get like a dog, and then you get another cat, and then there's another dog that shows up, and then there's another cat, and then another cat, and you get yourself another dog, and maybe you get like six. But maybe you, you actually have another dog, and another dog, and then another cat, another cat, another cat, another dog. Next thing you know, you get like 12 animals, six cats and six dogs. It's crazy. And I, let me be honest with you, I've been staring at this picture for a long time, and I'm pretty certain that dog is faking it, but that cat is most definitely, I'm about 95% sure that cat is playing the piano. That's amazing. So hats off to them. Yes, absolutely. Thanks for watching, everybody.